In researching historical figure Mary Chestnut Boykin, it is clear through the many scholarly articles that have reviewed her diaries, she was a notable source during the Civil War era. As the daughter of a South Carolina governor and wife of a close aide to President Jefferson, her narrations and photo collections are certainly considered reputable. Robert Baer, reporter and editor for the Post and Courier, declared Mary Chestnut's diaries and photos to be one of the greatest works of literature during the Civil War. Due to her close proximity to key figures during this time, her accounts were critical pieces of history. Historic filmmaker Ken Burns is said to have used Chestnut's diary to get an insider's view of the Confederacy for his famous Civil War documentary. After Chestnut's diary was first published in 1905, 211 of her famous photos were split up and believed lost until they resurfaced at an auction in Nashville in 2007. Valued between eighty dollars and $120,000, Chestnut's descendants raised enough money to secure the collection, although 25 photos are still considered missing. The valued collection of photos by Chestnut is now on display in the South Carolina Library for scholars and the public to enjoy. Specifically included are some of our nation's most famous historical figures such as General Robert E. Lee, President Jefferson, and President Lincoln. The photos are considered important for use by scholars as evidence for future studies. In 1905, Mary Chestnut's diary from Dixie made its first appearance on the Saturday Evening's Post. It goes into deep detail about the firing on Fort Sumter and also includes historical data of race and feminism in the South during this time. Augusta Rohrbach, author of an article criticizing Chestnut, states many believe she began her diary prior to the Civil War and not at the firing on Fort Sumter. However, her most famous photo taken from a nearby rooftop as she watched the first shots being fired upon Fort Sumter certainly served to corroborate her specific details in the diary. Rohrbach does recognize Chestnut as having experienced many historical events during her lifetime due to her close connection to Jefferson through her husband, Senator James Chestnut. Kelly B. Weber, a journalist for the Journal of Southern History, explains that Chestnut organized her photos alphabetically by subject name, along with an explanation of their significance during the Civil War. Chestnut also recorded direct quotes from individuals in her diary. Weber attests that Mary Chestnut's written thoughts and photos are a huge part of our nation's history. Many of Mary Chestnut's photos were portraits of figures mounted on cards. These cards de visite were more than generals and politicians. They were also of women and children during the war. Chestnut provides a visual in her diaries of what life was like on the southern home front during the Civil War and more specifically through the eyes of a woman. Mary Chestnut's diaries have given some scholars reason to research her racial connections and ideas on slavery. After much investigating by Julia Stern, a professor of English and American Studies, an article she wrote suggests there is some evidence that Chestnut had cross-racial ties. Such evidence indicates an African-American man who was part of Chestnut's ancestral line. The second racial consideration that Stern found was a photograph of an African-American woman taken by Mary Chestnut. The photo is believed to be Chestnut's slave maid Molly and indicates an affection for her since photos of slaves were rarely taken. Also, records found indicate she was paid a wage daily, certainly unlikely for a slave during this time. Starting in 1862, Molly and Chestnut went into the dairy business together and remained so until Chestnut died in 1886. This business is where the Chestnut family made most of their money. While it is hard to pinpoint if she truly was an opponent to slavery or not, Chestnut and Molly were believed to have had a great bond. Through Chestnut's A Confederate Woman's Life, we get a glimpse of wartime experience through the eyes of a woman of privilege. Chestnut was a Confederate wife that lived a life full of luxury, but never had any children of her own. However, she brought to life many public and non-public figures of the Confederacy for all of us to enjoy centuries later. Lydia Chris describes Chestnut's diaries as a first-hand account of the Confederate experience. As a woman during that era, Chestnut took on the role of plantation manager, professional writer, and lead provider. Christ also states that Chestnut's diaries are still one of the most researched pieces of evidence from this time period. As a prominent woman in the South, Chestnut's literary endeavors have done much to showcase feminism in the 19th century. Wendy Current, a professor of American literature, summarizes Chestnut's two years as a journey into the raising of a domestic woman during this era, and we learned firsthand the expectations of a lady during this time. This story of Helen, who was a young girl on the verge of womanhood, is immediately removed from school upon showing interest in a boy so that she may be properly taught how to be marriageable and increase her worthiness to a suitor. This decision by Helen's father insinuates that she is unable to come into her true domesticity without proper direction. Chestnut's story gives much insight into what it was like for a woman in the 19th century. It clearly defined the role of a woman was to become wed. Further, women had to be taught how to become more valuable to men by learning female characteristics that men found to be marriageable qualities. 
Mary Chestnut's documented accounts of the South before and during the Civil War were related with great style and strong opinion. Many believe her opinions were a skewed plantation view due to her high-profile life as a senator's wife and a fluent upbringing. She declared herself a seceder of the Union, but also understood the necessity for slavery to be abolished. Nearing the end of the Civil War, Chestnut's diary entries became dark and desperate. Despite all odds, Chestnut never gave in to self-pity. She earned a lifetime earning of $10 from articles purchased by Charleston Weekly News and Courier, and yet her journals and subsequent diaries have turned to publication and are now considered extraordinary documents. Many have sought to discount Chestnut's diaries over time, and in a dissertation by Kendra McDonald, she attempts to identify many inconsistencies. She declares that Chestnut's diaries consist of five volumes of many different versions. Some of these volumes, between 1862 and 1864, are missing, and many have been revised many times over. She also states that revisions were done years after the war, during a period of Chestnut's failing health. Since Chestnut's death, many more edited versions circulate which have revised Chestnut's romanticized view of the South to their own. Fiction or nonfiction, Mary Chestnut's diaries are renowned as providing great insight into the turbulent times of the Civil War.